Good afternoon. Um, welcome to this afternoon or maybe this morning's uh, webinar, wherever you are in the world. Um, my name is Adrian Astley Jones. I'm the Chief Commercial Officer of Intuitus, an Indaba company. And the webinar today is around reimagining the relationship between people and technology, specifically with a focus on the private equity sector, which is where a great deal of our clients uh, reside at the moment. Um, before we move forward, I'd like to introduce uh, our key uh, guest and a colleague of mine today, uh, Justin Marcucci, who is Indava's Chief Digital Officer. He's been with the business um, many years. Um, welcome, Justin. Thank you, Adrian. It's, it's a pleasure to be here today. Great. And um, also, I guess, just to frame the conversation up, what we're going to cover today. Um, so just to set the scene, uh, Intuitus is a, an Indava business which was inquired by Indava uh, nearly two years ago now. And over the last two years, we've been working together with Justin and his team and across the broader Indava business to integrate the two organizations. And today we'd like to provide an update and talk about and discuss um, really, I guess, two key things really. First one is how Indava accelerates change and helps clients succeed. So that's really around the Indava story from the beginning through IPO and the cru crucial question around the so what, what does that mean for clients and also clearly for our private equity environment? And secondly, within private equity specifically, reimagining value creation and digital transformation through the investment life cycle. So with that in mind, I think it's probably best to um, start with uh, Justin asking you, perhaps you can paint the scene around the background to you know Indava, the story, the journey, and also positioning the company. So, for example, on the on the screen there, we can see a positioning slide, which perhaps just helps people understand exactly where Indava fits. But there's a whole more lot of colour uh, and detail to that. So, Justin, perhaps you could sort of fill in the background and just to explain that to our to our listeners today. Uh, absolutely, I'd be happy to. So, I mean, I think let, let's first start with a, a general overview of the business. So, Indava was founded in the year 2000 uh, by our CEO, who is currently still the CEO and founder of the business, John Cotterill. Um, it started as a technology and engineering and architectural consulting organization, really providing, providing uh, enterprise-led best practice and thought leadership in the architectural space. Um, a, as the business evolved through the, the 2000s, we realized that the opportunity was to not just make architectural recommendations from a consulting perspective, but then be able to deliver those recommendations <clears throat> at scale, utilizing Agile. Um, the business became really more complete from a spectrum of capability standpoint in the 2005, 2006 range, as we started to then do work with um, and expanded the business into near shore delivery. And that meant that we uh, merged with and acquired an organization in Moldova, um, which provided us with scaled uh, engineering services. <clears throat> so that was the first, you know, really the first step of the organization growing and, and expanding its capability set to be able to provide both consulting services as well as then technology delivery. <clears throat> From 2006 through, frankly, 2015, the organization scaled pretty dramatically. And went from being a three to you know two to three hundred person organization to being about a two thousand person organization in 2015. Um, and at, at that point, Indava realized the opportunity was to continue to expand its capability set to cover more of the needs of the the clients that they were servicing. <clears throat> and so, apologies. Apologies. Okay. So uh, at, at that point. And I've expanded really more into the digital realm um, and started uh, working with and building out a capability, some of which was built organically, some of it was through acquisition. That's how, how I came into the business. Uh, I had started and founded a firm, uh, a technology user experience and strategy organization in the United States. Uh, and at that point, uh, we merged the business with Indava and provided the backbone for really a digital capability that we needed to replicate and build across the globe. And so I think from, from 2015 to 2018, the, the story of the business was, how can we provide cross-functional multidisciplinary teams of technologists, strategists, designers, consultants that allowed us to cater to and care for 
having a knowledge of the industries and businesses that our clients operated within, being able to provide them with strategic, strategic guidance and advisory services as to what they should do and why that made sense, and then deliver the solution that was ideated into production with scaled engineering services. And that took us to, to 2018, at which point we went public as an organization uh, on the New York Stock Exchange and accelerated our growth even further. Uh, the idea at that point being is, you know, we, we needed to, we had predominantly been a kind of UK centric organization with European delivery, uh, central, uh, central and Eastern European delivery up to that point. And we really needed to expand the business into new geographies, namely the Americas at that point being the area that required the most strategic investment and provided the largest opportunity from a, from a, from a TAM standpoint. Uh, and that's why we listed in the United States, we listed on the New York Stock Exchange. It was about driving the right kind of brand exposure and creating the opportunities to participate more meaningfully in that market. Um, so at this point, we were an organization that was scaled. We were several thousand people. I think just after IPO, we were maybe four or 5,000. Um, we provided a range of, of capabilities that spanned the, the spectrum of again, product and technology strategies, delivering intelligent digital experiences and world-class engineering. Um, and we realized that the opportunity for us was to further differentiate ourselves to the market. Now, the, the slide that you have in front, in front of you actually does a decent job, I believe, um, of, of talking about where we fit within the ecosystem of pure play next-gen technology companies. Uh, and we really believe we sit right at the, at the convergence of a number of different business types. So you have traditional IT service organizations that are providing enterprise engin engineering uh, at scale, uh, generally they're doing so in an agile capacity. Um, those organizations are the big players that you would expect, um, whether that's that's EPAM or whether that's uh, Cognizant or whether that's some of the, the Indian offshores. These are organizations that are providing large scale teams of enterprise engineers. Um, you have business and technology consultants that are looking and can provide advisory services within a particular industry segment uh, or within a particular kind of niche technology. Uh, and those organizations really have an understanding of the industries in which they're, they're making those advisory recommendations. And then you have digital agencies that have a fundamental understanding of the human condition and, and can recommend compelling experiences that make all of those things usable and attractive to the humans that are you know, inevitably wielding the technology that we build. Now we think we sit at the center of that. Traditional IT service organizations generally don't have the, the, the knowledge and, and product vision to be able to make the recommendations that they're then implementing. Business and technology consultants often don't have the delivery chops uh, from an engineering standpoint to bring those recommendations to life. And digital agencies, while they, they understand human condition, often generally don't have the scaled engineering necessary to deliver those kinds of experiences in any sort of meaningful global way. Um, and we believe we, we have the best of all three of those those parts sitting at the, at the again, the convergence of those areas. Yeah, I think um, that's super helpful, Justin, I think, because what it what it demonstrates is over, you know, clearly a significant amount of time and hard work and effort building a organization not only has been successful and listed, but actually fills that gap as you 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 outline there on the diagram. And, and I think that sort of neatly sort of plays into our, our next slide, really, which is around you know the, the question of why does Indava stand out and also this also talks to start to talk about I think around private equity and our audience today around leveraging next generation technologies multidiscipline agile teams and and you know helping clients accelerate their product strategies their experiences and so on and so forth and in the private equity setting of course having worked in that space uh, you know for more than 15 years now um, you know there was a day when you could perhaps acquire a business and sit on it and you know the, the the wind would be in your favor and you'd do quite well over a few years but nowadays the time is really now to leverage technology and and make sure you understand technology and that you accelerate as quickly as you can within a you know uh, controlled manner so i think um you know if you can maybe put a little bit of color around this one just in terms of you know where is indaba working and and you know the the idea of acceleration and product technology and strategy. How, you know, where did that all come from and what do you think it means in the market today? 
Yeah, so I, mean, I think what's really meaningful here is if you if you look at product and technology strategies, intelligent experiences, and world class engineering, that's kind of the the items on the right hand side of the page. What they really do is they they kind of cover the a pretty wide portion of the spectrum of of how a um, transformation of an organization or digital acceleration of an organization would need to occur. You need to understand what you're going to be doing from a product and a technology standpoint, how you're going to approach solving the business problem you have, you need to be able to build a compelling experience, again, that is going to be usable and is going to fill the need um, for either your customers or your internal users or whomever that's being focused on. And you need to have the ability to build, to provide world-class engineering, to build it in a secure way, in a stable way, in something that can, that can stand up to you know, millions of transactions a day. And as you start to pull together those three larger components of, of ways that, that we can engage in, and things that we can build, you really start to complete the circle uh, from an organizational standpoint. One of the things that a lot of our clients have traditionally faced is you have different organizations providing consulting and advisory services. Um, and so you might have the big management consultants come in and they, they help assess your problem. Uh, and at that point, they deliver a 400 page PowerPoint that tells you exactly how things need to work. You get a high five from them, they leave, and then you you hand that to your your incumbent technology provider to implement. And invariably, in that handoff and in that transition, there's this chasm of accountability that that opens up um, because your your technology provider is not committed to making that successful because it wasn't their idea. And, and perhaps in practicality, there's a lot of things that don't work in the utopian solution that was developed by a management consulting organization. And the management consulting organizations. Um, again, traditionally don't have the depth of technology delivery experience to understand what will and what won't work in kind of on the ground in, in reality. And so as we have evolved as an organization, our goal has been to close that accountability gap completely and be the ones that are not only making the recommendation about what should be done and how it should be done, but then being the same people that are putting their hands up and saying, you know what, we're going to we're going to build it for you at scale and we're going to we're going to manage it and iterate it and evolve it over time to ensure that it's successful for your business. Because that's how we've built our business is is making promises, making commitments, and then delivering upon them in a really successful way. Now, where where I think that provided an interest for us as relates to to private equity in the private equity space is that for for years since 2010, Indava has been has been partnering with big PE funds and big firms in helping to take investments that they've made and transform those businesses into a meaningful way. And at certain points of time, you know, as, as much of a third of our overall staff, if not more, um, has been has been deployed into um, building technology solutions and, and, and helping those organizations alter their business models with next gen tech for PE firms. Um, and so it's something we have a heritage in. Where, where we really saw an, an opportunity specific to the relationship that with Intuitus was that there was a whole area that we we did not have any real visibility or or, or frankly uh, any sort of entree into, and that was in the 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 strategic IT advisory services that Intuitus has delivered for for years and years and years, um, and that made for a really interesting and initial conversation um, as we we met Adrian and team. Um, I mean, Adrian, you want to talk about that from from your perspective a bit? Some of those early conversations. Yeah, you know, I, I, absolutely. And I think, um, yes, no, for sure. So just quickly before we get that to it, I just wanted to cover one one other quick thing there, if I can. So there sure. was just, just, just to sort of complete that picture, I think, um, I think it's important to, 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 to recognize, I guess, that Indava as an organization works across multiple sectors and multiple industries, okay? So, um, you know, we're talking here about uh, an organization that works across, uh, you know, business services, financial services, fintech, manufacturing, logistics, consumer, so on and so forth. So, uh, and I think there's a, a, to a certain extent, sometimes perhaps a, a misconception to a certain extent in, in the market per se or the business community, which is, um, you know, when we talk about product strategies and software and so on and so forth, that they they actually only relate to, you know, what I would call strategically tech enabled businesses, i.e. for an obvious example, a software business. So, again, Justin, you mentioned 
um, in Dava has got a history of working with private equity backed businesses. So, you know, I, I know and, and have worked personally with Advent International. I know that's one of the businesses where um, in the payment space uh, in Dava supported a, 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 a rapid scale environment of a very successful business. And there's others like that. So the point I'm making, I guess, and I think it's important for our, everybody listening today is to, to really get a sense of this isn't this doesn't just relate and the whole subject we're talking about doesn't just relate to you know pure software businesses in Dava as has as has Intuitus in the past worked with many more what I would call industrial supply chain businesses so for example Maersk the the the, the global um, you know transportation warehousing supply chain business is a, a core client of Indava's so I think it's um you know it's important to to to, to sort of mention that and I guess then. The other quick um, mention is really around just finally positioning in Dava in terms of where it is today, in terms of size of business and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, I think Justin, you mentioned a few years ago, it was 5,000 employees. It's now north of 7,000. Um, global coverage, North America, Europe, um, Latin America, um, Eastern Europe. So a growing global footprint to, to support Businesses which are, in, from a private equity point of view, not only mid-market, but are mid-market and larger businesses which have got global aspirations. You know, so we do a lot of work where mid-market investors are acquiring, they might be European-based businesses, but they are acquiring bolt-on acquisitions through um, North America or other parts of the globe, and they require an advisor uh, and an implementer to help them deliver on and execute on those acquisitions. So I think that's an important um, a distinction to make. And then, you know, as we move really to, um, you know, the, the private equity environment. So what we've found over the last three, four, five years, arguably, depending, you know, on, on which parts of the private equity market you speak to, but a growing trend is that the deployment, understanding, development, design, execution, whatever you want to call it, of technology is becoming prevalent across all parts of private equity. And it's now actually a core component of the value creation strategy. And therefore, in terms of the um, two years ago when we we, we did the, the deal with Indava and now that we're merging and integrating, we, um, we very much took the view that um, we need to be able as an organization, as an, as an advisor to private equity, as a technology advisor to private equity, we need to be able to leverage cutting edge next generation technology, enterprise architects, you know, deep software engineering expertise and product strategies. Because if you can't leverage that, even in the diligence environment, I think to, in today's rapidly changing environment, you know, you are certainly potentially, so I say, missing a part of the value creation plan. So the, the whole um, you know, strategy going forward is to create the Indava Private Equity Group, um, which I think if we can move slides forward, we have a slide which just positions that. Um, great. Um, actually, could we go back one slide if that's okay? Yeah, perfect. So really, um, the private equity group is is combining the heritage in private equity of the Intuitus brand, um, along with the practitioner-driven approach that uh, Justin has outlined. I'm pulling those two areas together, and there you can see in the middle of the screen to form the Indava private equity group, which brings together deep expertise in the P technology advisory space. So we believe that that's a, a, a differentiated offering. There are many advisors out there. We're aware of them, for sure. Um, but actually leveraging the capability that Indava allows us to bring to the table from a very real-world practitioner point of view and leveraging that from day one in the investment life cycle, we believe makes a significant difference because we're now able to advise our clients during the diligence process, so whether it's buy side or sell side, um, in a much deeper level which can help them set out the value creation plan from day one. It can help them understand the, the, the price points, perhaps the size of the check they're going to write, the time scale that they have to invest over. Um, and that is applicable across all different sectors, as I say. And I think I just want to re-emphasize that because um, you know, clearly the world is moving in a technology driven, driven way, um, artificial intelligence, big data, so on and so forth. These are all 
tech can be tended to be associated with consumer businesses and more tech enabled businesses but the, the the number of times that we are engaging with more traditional businesses where they have back-end integration challenges they have a, a high number of internal users who, who need to get smarter with systems smarter with data it, it is a significant part of the work that we do so I don't know if that sort of helps um, Justin put a bit of color around that I'll pause there because I, I, I went on a little bit there but that maybe you might want to add to that and bring some of that to life as well. Yeah, I think that was actually really <clears throat> succinctly said, Adrian. I think the reality is, you know, as we as we realized the, the power of the intuitus model and understood that again their their deep heritage in providing PE-based technology advisory services, <clears throat> it would give us the ability to further extend, excuse me. <clears throat> It would give us the ability to further extend the, the kind of value we provided to organizations that we partnered with. Um, I, and I, Adrian, I think you said it really well. It's it's about it's about combining that that very senior, very battle hardened view on how to how to appropriately advise PE firms or organizations either looking to be on the make transactions on the buyer sell side. How to take that sort of capability, combine it with on the ground practitioner level knowledge, senior practitioner level, level knowledge of individuals that are implementing those sorts of those transformations on a daily basis and have done so for the last you know 20 years. And that, that combination of of vision and and senior directional recommendations alongside of those individuals that are implementing those and, and see how things <clears throat> work um, when you're when you're in the weeds, when you're in the code, is is an enormously powerful combination, and yes. we, we believe it gives us the ability to even further complete and provide a level of of service to the organizations we partner with, reducing any kind of accountability anxiety they may have about the partner partners that they selected, and providing them with far more comfort that across the entire life cycle of that of that transaction, they're getting you know, a really balanced cross-functional set of folks recommending <clears throat> all of the, all of the different ways that they could proceed, which in turn, you know, helps to prove out the investment thesis that was initially put on the table. Yeah, yeah, I, I, and I think that's absolutely right, Justin. I think, you know, the evolution here is probably best you can, you can sort of see that by, you know, even if you look at three, four, five years ago, it was only really coming to light that, you know, an investor should do a code review of, of the code that they're acquiring. And again, that could have been in a consumer business as much as it could be a bespoke technology platform in a big um, or mid cap um, industrials business where they've got internal software that's been developed. And the reluctance to do that prior to four or five years ago was strong. Whereas now, I think, you know, nearly it's one of the first questions that we get asked by investors is, I'm buying this this business, it has technology, it has software code in it. Can you help me understand it? What should we do? Can we do a code review? And of course that sometimes has some challenges around access and so on and so forth. But the answer to the question is yes, we, we usually can even with limited access. And if there is no access because of various different restrictions the vendor has placed on the process, then there are other ways to try and find out as best you can whether that code base is, you know, a good code base is maintainable as, as technical debt. And that again is by leveraging, you know, deep expertise around um, uh, architectural experience, software engineering, so on and so forth. And, and the pace of change of these technologies is so quick that you have to have that relevance. So I think, you know, if we sort of sum that up, what does it mean in terms of, you know, the go-to strategy and the go-to positioning for, a, a, a diligence or an advisory engagement through Indava Private Equity Group going forward. Well, it's really about a, a team shape, which you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, combines a, a tech expert, a tech advisor, and a product expert. And in there, you may well have an enterprise architect. And the reason it's not to flood the, the team with, uh, you know, full-time people all the time, and some of these people may dip in and out for a, a day at a time, is really because it's very difficult to make a really good strong assessment of not only what you're buying today so the downside risk but also the value creation plan and the investment thesis going forward you need the mix of skills to really understand 
what's the art of the possible and what's the downside risk. So for example, you could look at the code base and you could look at the architecture, but without a product strategist, could you really put the whole puzzle together and give a complete as answer as you possibly can to that private equity investor? And I think the answer today is no, you can't, or you can, but it becomes more and more difficult to do it if you're single threaded. So as you can see on that slide, we have multiple multidisciplinary teams. They're deployed on a case by case basis across all of the industries that we've already talked about with the capabilities you can see in the language capabilities and coverage you can see on that screen. So we think that's a powerful message and we think it's, it's a message which we've worked on for a number of years and we've put together and brought to the market in response to market demand. It's not the other way around. This isn't us leading the market. This is the market saying, this is the direction of travel. This is where technology is going. This is the challenge. So we've shaped a model and a business which we think can directly respond to that. Um, I'll pause there. I don't know, Justin, if you wanted to add anything finally to that that last slide, and then perhaps if if uh, if you do great, if not, we can we can start to wrap up. I, I think again, I think you've, you've said it incredibly well. I mean, there's a <clears throat> there's a responsiveness to the team shape that we've built this model that we we deploy into these these you know, on a case by case basis. There's a responsiveness. There's a breadth of 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 knowledge and influence. Uh, and again, there's the ability to pivot and understand how to best uh, make recommendations that are going to drive the right sort of outcome for that organization, trying to make it, you know, what could potentially be a, a very meaningful investment decision. Um, and being having a partner that can do that and and be be involved and embedded with the organization throughout the entirety of that investment decision process, um, as well as then, you know, be leading the charge in that value creation plan uh, post acquisition or post transaction. Is, is hugely powerful and uh, again ends up and ends up providing a level of continuity into that decision making that you know just creates a far better far better outcomes on the on the other side yeah totally agree great okay well look i think um with as with all uh, webinars they they clearly come to an end um i'd like to thank justin marcucci for joining us today um so justin thank you very much for that yes thanks uh, for having me no problem. And I'd like to also thank everyone for listening in. Uh, we appreciate your time as always, and hopefully we'll get a chance to speak to you in the future. Thank you, everybody.